going on YouTube? Uh, just doing a small video here to show a few people who've been asking me questions on how to set unit size on Photoshop CS4 as well as setting up the rulers and the grid and being able to snap to the grid uh, as well as using guidelines. So in this video I'm going to show you the basics. Uh, you can use this from anything from 2D, 3D art, uh, website design, things like that. So if you've ever needed something to snap and be scaled properly uh, this tutorial is for you. So this will work pretty much I think for every Photoshop that's out there that you may use. Uh, I'm just gonna safely say anywhere from CS5 and up you will be able to do this. Uh, but don't take my word for it. Uh, don't put my <laughs> my quote online and said hey this guy lied. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does work. So anyway we're gonna first start off with coming under the view menu selection at the top we'll come all the way down to rulers okay also the hotkeys control R hit that the rulers will pop up okay now I've already had my measurement set this isn't by default the defaults different uh, but I will show you how to change that uh, in a little bit here so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna make sure that snap is on this way you can snap to the grid and the ruler once you set that up okay so now that that's actually set up we want to go under snap too you want to make sure that this is snapped to guides, layers, things like that. You could always take them off if you want, uh, but I encourage to use them, uh, depending on what you want to do. I'm pretty sure if you're well experienced in this program, you don't need my tutorials. So uh, now that that's pretty much set up, we're also going to come up under show. You want to show the grid. It's not showing right now. Uh, so I have smart guides showing up, which is what I use to do other guidelines within the grid itself. Um, so I will click on show grid the grids white right now uh, the reason it's white is because I was doing a black background prior to this uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under edit come down to preferences I'm gonna come over to guides grid and slices So we're gonna change this to black so this way it shows up as you can see it's pretty vibrant you don't have to have it to black but I'm doing this so that you can better see it on high uh, definition resolution here uh, this is going to be a 1080p video now you can change that color over here by clicking here or you can select different colors down here so also with the smart guides and the guides which are basically the same thing um, you can change the colors uh, now that the guides, smart guides actually are what pop up when you are moving one thing over another they'll they'll show where it's aligned from the center to the edges things like that so this is what that color will be and you'll probably see that uh, later on in the video so just keep that in mind so these are just like guides at the more dynamic and Photoshop will show you as you're moving things around now guides are the ones that you put down yourself uh, this would be taking them from the ruler and bringing them onto the grid and I'll show you that as well um, for now you also want to make sure that this will not be by default centimeters even though you've set everything else centimeters it will be in inches so you want to set that to centimeters just like your ruler this way the grid behind you right here will look this way it's set one unit is one centimeter I do this because I do a lot of 3d game design uh, and I go by Unreal Engine 4's unit size which is one unit equals one centimeter uh, so if you're doing real world scale you want to keep everything to measurement so that's set up uh, same thing here this will usually reflect what you've changed but if you don't do the right click up here like so I'll show you in a second um, you could do it here and there's a few other options if you uh, feel like changing those around so just to keep that in mind okay so we have this set up I'm gonna right click on the ruler okay so again right click this menu will pop up I click centimeters that's why I already had it set up so you could also change it to inches and so forth so everything lines up across the board um, also like I said before you want to make sure that you know the difference between right click and left click different menus will pop up um, so if you can't do it this way you can do it what I just showed you a few seconds ago uh, in the other menu we're gonna show you the guidelines okay so let me show you that real quick what you want to do is you want to hold left click, left left mouse button, hold it down, and then drag the cursor downward. So if you're going from top 
down, this is what you'll do. Now that little line you're seeing is the smart guide that you're about to create. Now it's going to appear green because that's what the color I had selected. There's your uh, guideline. Okay. Usually I have this in a black background. I'm going to do that in a second and show you uh, with a few shapes how the dynamic uh, smart guides work as well as the layering in Photoshop, what's dominant above and below. Um, so, so we got that set up, right? Now if you want to take that away, all you got to do is make sure that this top right here is selected. Okay. This will have that little cross there. It means moving. So once you hover over it, the icon will change. There will be two little arrows, and it looks like you can move it. So it will do that same gray line again, and when you want to get rid of it, drag it up here, then let go of the left mouse button. So you'll click on it, hold, drag up, let go. Okay. You can do the smart guides from the side as well. So hold down left button, drag outward. Now this snap to option that I had shows you that it snaps to the grid and the units perfectly. So you want to make sure that you can snap and uh, lock all the units so that way you're not eyeballing everything. This way it will save you a lot of trouble and heart, uh, heartache and headache later on. I know a lot of artists who mess up on great pieces of work and do not realize that simple things like this could have made their life easier. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, I'm going to make the background black. I'm doing this because uh, I want to make sure that you can see what I'm going to do. So anyway, now as you can see the grid lines obviously aren't going to show up because they're also black. So what you want to go do, again, come under Guides, Grid, and Slices. Change this to white, obvious reasons. You can do a light gray if you want to. It doesn't have to be white, but make sure it's visible. So now that it's visible, okay, close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to, say, red. Whoop. That's how I'm going to do it. I just changed both because right now I'm not totally sure exactly which one's going to pop up on me. Um, what's going on here? There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the elliptical tool. Okay. And I'm going to use the grid to make a perfect circle. And what it will do is it will snap it. And as you can see, you'll be able to see where that circle is. So this helps you with like circles and shapes, like say if you're doing nuts and bolts on a normal map in uh, game design. You want to make sure that it's a perfect circle, not some half-ass screw. Sure, if it's bent and banged up, that's great. Uh, but you always want to kind of start off with a solid shape. Uh, so we're going to do that. And that's going to turn red because I had this enabled. So this is going to come up. You can change these later on if you want. I'm just going to leave them as is. Now this layer is uh, above the background layer. So that's popping up above it. I'm going to go back here. Part of my cursor, I'm using Windows 10, and it has a lot of graphical problems uh, with the cursor, I've noticed. I'm going to be reverting back to Windows 10, I mean 7. Um, I advise anybody who has a good computer or does a lot of things, just get away from 10 until they decide to make a proper operating system, because Microsoft, I don't know what they're smoking, uh, but I, I think they really need to recheck themselves. Anyway, personal opinions aside, we're going to change this color to say green okay I'm just doing this to be safe so I don't make a shape and it turns black so it doesn't really matter um, I know one of these is the more dominant one you could switch it around I'm pretty sure it shows you here uh, again it's been a while since I've done this so uh, we'll just show you this way I'm gonna go to the rectangle tool I'm going to click on a corner. It's automatically going to snap to the grid. As you can see, it'll even show you on the left there the width and height uh, in centimeters. Okay, So it's really going to show you exactly um, what you're doing uh, for the height. Now, I know there's a way to make it perfect. Uh, right now, it says 3.01. Uh, there is a way to make it perfect on the zero. Um, but right now, I would have to say that this is as close as you're probably going to get. So we'll make the, uh, no, that's weird, I don't know why I just did that, I had these both green. Anyway, if you run into that problem, uh, just take the filler, you got to ratterize the shape, and just fill it in. Okay, so there we go. We took care of that. 
Now we got the rectangle as the top layer. The ellipse circle is the second layer. Obviously the background is the third uh, at the back. So even though they're next to each other, if I were to take the rectangle right now and move it, it's gonna snap to the grid, okay? As you can see, those little purple lines are popping up. Um, it is a little harder to see. I'll show you without the grid in a second. Uh, but those are the dynamic smart guides. Those are what are going to pop up to show you where you're centering it, where it's hitting a, uh, an edge. Might be centering on the, the shape you're dragging versus the one behind you. So this is dominant. That's over the middle. Okay. So if I were to drag the circle layer, now again to dra uh, click and select would be left, hold down, then drag it upwards until you see a little gray line appear above that. That will then move it. Now the circle is above the rectangle. Okay, So if you're not really sure about layers and why a lot of people talk layers in this, you'll see once you start doing a lot of uh, artwork why you really will enjoy Photoshop. There's a lot of layer capabilities. Quixel Suite uses a lot of layers, folders, grouping, things like that to get their their custom feel for textures and smart materials, uh, painting and DDO and stuff like that, making normal maps and NDO to work properly. Uh, it does a lot of the work for you. Um, it's just basically a plug-in to Photoshop. So uh, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of knowledge beforehand before messing around with it. You want to know a little bit about Photoshop ahead of time. But this video here is basically meant to show you measurements, guides, uh, snapping to the guides, such things like that. So now we're going to go under view again. And remember if I showed you under show, you can get rid of grid. Grid will disappear. Okay, so now you can see things more clearly. Clearly, They will still snap uh, to the grid. It's just not showing it. Um, so I'm going to take the, the ellipse, which is the circle. Let me... Okay. You see the purple lines. Those are the smart guides. And it'll even show you where it's snapping in the center of the actual image itself in the background. So you see the ones. This is really good to have so when you're dragging around and you're not using the guides, it will tell you um, how far away. You know, you see these little things pop up. Gives you kind of an idea where you want to put things visually. So if you're really abstract, you know, things like that, uh, it helps you learn where to put things. So I hope this uh, video helped you out. Um, sorry, I couldn't really cover much more on this. It's pretty much just the basics right now. So, again, if you are not sure of how to get this all set up, uh, let me just do this real quick. You have the rulers up, right click, this will pop up. Pick whatever measurement you want. Again, go under view, make sure rulers are selected first before you do that last step I just showed you. Make sure snap is on, and make sure whatever it is you want it to snap to is selected. I have all of them selected. Okay, if you want to change the measurement size of the grid, um, you go under preferences and you go under units and rulers. Come to centimeters, I already have it locked in. You can change it if you want and change these things. Then you want to go to guides, grid, and slices. Again, you want to make sure this is centimeters so it matches the ruler, otherwise, the grid's going to be different. Um, and then you can change colors to whatever you would like to use and whatever preference. So, again, thank you for watching this video. I hope it really helped you guys out. I will be making more videos on Photoshop uh, as well as some in 3ds Max, Unreal Engine, uh, and possibly the more I learn in Sony Vegas. Again, it's been a while since I've been using it, so I'm going to have to reteach myself a few things. Uh, I will show you some tricks in that for video editing, trailer making, uh, commercial design, things like that. Uh, in Sony Vegas uh, Pro... I'm guessing now it's probably 14. Last one I used is 13. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Click, like, subscribe. Uh, and to all my supporters who do subscribe to my channel, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate your interaction. Uh, I will try to help you the best I can when you ask a few questions. If I don't understand it, I will send you to videos and links that I learned what I learned from. Uh, and anything else that I could explain to you, whether it be in layman's terms or in uh, exact detail, I will do so. Uh, but, yeah, good luck in your uh, 2D, 3D graphic design uh, careers or hobbies, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.